Gabe, in this episode, we are continuing to talk about the command of Christ, deny yourself. Do you want to read the verse where we get our command from? So it comes from um, Luke chapter 9, verse 23, which says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And I think, Nate, that it's so significant here. It's how it says, if any man mm-hmm. will come after me. This applies to all men exactly. that want to follow Christ. Yes, it applies to all of us. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Wow. Gabe, I think in this episode, I want to start out talking about how the denial of self is about the power of God. And 1 Corinthians 1, 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. So I we could even apply that to this command that this in the natural mind may sound foolish. But what does the rest of this verse say? But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Gabe, one of the things I love about this command is, and really, it is about all of the Christian life. It's not about my power. It's not about my ability to live the Christian life. It's really what it comes down to and what this boils down to is me surrendering myself, humbling myself to the Lord, letting him fill me and live this command through me. Because when I do, that's when the Christian life actually starts to work because Christ begins to live himself in and through me. Amen. We need his power to fulfill this command because really, I heard someone say once, flesh can't overcome flesh. That's right. Um, And so we can't deny self in the power of self. That's right. We actually need the power of Christ to enable us to deny ourselves and to embrace all that the Lord has for us. I think it's really helpful too, Nate, to dig into the definition of the word deny because there's so much here. But when we we think about deny, the definition um, here is to deny utterly disown, abstain, Hmm. right? And I just want to highlight the idea here of disown, right? So Jesus says here that we're to deny or we're to disown ourselves. You say, why do we disown ourselves? Well, it's because we're owned of another. Hallelujah. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. (laughs) He's purchased us with his blood. We are his. We are no longer owned. We've been bought with a price. Think about what it says in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. It says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God? And here it is. And ye are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirits, which are God, and in, in, in your mm-hmm. spirit, which are God's. And I think this is so significant because we need to realize that we disown ourselves because we are owned of another. We are Hallelujah. owned of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are not our own. We are his. And what is the result of that realization? It's that we stop living for ourselves. We stop living for our our own goals, our own interests. You know, in kind of the outline of the biblical usage here of this word deny, um, we see that the word deny has the idea of to affirm that one has no acquaintance or connection with someone. And then listen to this, Nate, to forget oneself. To lose sight of oneself and one's own interests. So to deny ourselves is to, it's to lose sight of ourselves. Hallelujah. It's to lose sight of our own interests because we are now about the interests of another. We are about mm-hmm. the kingdom of another. We are about the will of another. And that is the will of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not our own. Mm-hmm. We've been bought with a price. So we deny ourselves. We embrace in every area of our life the Lord Jesus Christ. And we live for him. And isn't it wonderful to realize that really, Nate, to be the Lord Jesus, to belong to him, is to be truly free. Because we are his. And what we're free from is we're free from sin. We're free from ourselves. Mm -hmm. That we might live unto him. And that's kind of the wonderful reality behind this command, deny yourself. Gabe, I think one of the lies it's easy to believe is that living for self equals freedom. Mm -hmm. When actually it doesn't. We're actually, when we're living for ourselves. think about it. What are we living for? We're we're living for a fallen nature. We're living for something that's faulted from the very beginning with our forefathers, Adam and and Eve. We're living for self and there's just so much bondage and even living for the world. You know, Mm -hmm. think about what the world has to offer. Think about where the world's going right now. 
Um, it's this is not freedom. Now, mm -hmm. temporarily, it might feel satisfactory, or it might feel there's some pleasure in that. And but at the end of the day, when you're by yourself, there's no joy, there's no peace. But when we exchange ourselves, our own desires, our own will for Christ's desires, for Christ's will, that's when we begin to be fulfilled. And what we're fulfilled with is we're filled full of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, I think of uh, John 3, 30 is a good example of this. It's actually uh, John the Baptist, and he's coming uh, before Christ. He's, he's setting the stage for Christ to come. Um, and, uh, but he, one thing, one of the things, Gabe, that I love about John is he always, it seemed like he always made sure to not make it about himself. He was always pointing to somebody else. And I feel like, Gabe, that's how we should be in many ways in our Christian life, a reflection of Jesus. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about what I want to accomplish today. It's about Jesus. And John 3.30 says, this is what John said, John the Baptist said, he says, he must increase, speaking of Jesus, but I must decrease. And what a beautiful thing it is that my fleshly desires, pursuits can decrease, but Christ can increase and give me in exchange for those selfishnesses, in exchange for that pride and that arrogance, his humility, his love, and his fulfillment. Amen. And I think what's another important thing to see here in, in um, the, the command where our, our verse comes from, I mean, the, 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 the verse our command comes from, it says, and this is so powerful, and I think there's an important little word here that we can't miss. It says in, in, in Luke 9, 23, And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. And here's the word I'm thinking of, Nate, daily, and follow me. Mm. And so as believers, we need to be taking up the cross daily. We need to be daily reminding ourselves we are not our own. Mm -hmm. We need to be daily reminding ourselves that we died in Christ and were raised with him to newness of life, that we are don't, that, that, if one died for all, then all died, as the scripture says, that we who live should not live for ourselves anymore, but him who raises the dead. Can we, can, can you, th if we consider the impact that this would have of every day, we reminded ourselves, I'm not my own. I'm not about my interests. I'm not about my goals today. I'm not about my hopes. I'm not about my dreams today. I am about the goals, the purpose, the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one whose disciple we are, mm -hmm. the one who is our, our life. Think about what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 31. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. And listen to this phrase, Nate. I die daily. daily. Mm -hmm. I'm at daily embracing that cross. The daily, uh, the daily denying of self and saying no to me is to say yes to Jesus. And I think this is the core of this command to deny self, is me saying no to myself and yes mm -hmm. to Jesus every time. And I think the daily aspect, Gabe, you know, one might ask, well, why daily? What's significant about daily? What about maybe every other day or once a week or once Quarterly. a month? <laughs> yeah, right. Quarterly. Um, it's that I think it's 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 a couple of reasons. One is <laughs> I need Jesus daily. I need Jesus actually moment by moment. And then when we do die daily it's a reminder we we really need our minds to be changed about this because gabe i don't know about you but um it's like it's easy to get in a rut a mental rut of thinking it's all about me and then to in many ways just stay in that rut but when we are reminding ourselves and we're bringing this command back up into our memory and, and, and reminding ourselves that we've been commanded by jesus to die and that it's a daily process it's like we can be freed out of that rut of self-love and we can be we can be liberated from that bondage and that we can be our minds and our hearts can be set in right alignment with God that it's it's about God it's about his living. I think of a few examples gave in scripture that really I feel like emulated or exemplified this command and and I think part of before I share these examples gave I think part of 
of really being able to apply this command is realizing who I am not and who God is. I am not God. I am not in control of myself. You know, it is, it, it, you know, um, it's humbling ourselves before the Almighty. God is the creator. We're not. We're the creature in many ways. You know, God is the master and Lord. I'm not. But what a blessed place that is. It's a place of peace and rest. Well, who exemplified this? Isaiah and Isaiah 6 verse 5 says, the, the book of Isaiah says here, Then said I, this is Isaiah speaking, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Gabe, when, when our eyes, when we truly understand who God is and who we are in relation to a holy, perfect, all-powerful, almighty God, it's like the, just the natural result of that in many ways is humility, is this humbling. Verse 6 says, Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips. Mm. Thine iniquity is taken away. Thy sin is purged. Isaiah understood his position before a holy God. And because he did, God empowered him to speak on behalf of, of God himself. And that's very, very powerful. Another good example is the publican in Luke 18. Starting in verse 13, it says, And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus goes on to say in verse 14, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Gabe, I believe this was contrasting the Pharisee who had gone down and, and the publican and the Pharisee were standing side by side and the, and the Pharisee was basically saying, God, I thank you that I'm not like this publican. You know, at least I do this and that and this and that. But yet the publican was, was coming to the Lord in prayer, humbling himself, recognizing it wasn't about him, but it was about the power of God. And you know what? This publican went down to his house justified. God justified him. Um, the last example I want to mention real quickly about maybe of, of someone that exemplified this um, is found in Luke 5, 8 through 9. It's Simon Peter. It says, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. If we remember the story this is when, I believe it was, that Jesus had commanded them to cast the net on the other side. And at his command, when they did that, they caught so many fishes. And Peter, seeing this miraculous, just the power of God, it humbled him. And of course, we know that, you know, there's more of the story in life of Peter that transpires after this. And then even all the way after the death of Jesus and after the resurrection of Jesus, this, in some ways, this account happens again. But later, Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit and used of the Holy Spirit. But just, I think, Gabe, what I'm saying in all these examples and what I'm seeing here is that when we humble ourselves, that's when God's grace, you know, James talks about this. I think James chapter four, when we humble ourselves, that's when God's grace is, is, is able to come upon us. And that's how we live the Christian life. It's not through our self-ability. It's not through our own power. It's through the grace of God living within us. Well, and I think, too, that when we see like what, like Isaiah and like the, the public and like Peter, when we see who we are and we see the glory and majesty of who God is, it causes us to humble ourselves. But the other thing is, is it causes us just to be blown away at how much he loves us. Hallelujah. And we don't deserve it and we didn't earn yes. it. L listen to what it says in, you know, we think about our command. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. That 
Think about how the Lord Jesus took up his cross wow. and he did it for us. Like, he did like, it for us. Like, yes. never miss the wonder of this. In, in John 15, verse 12, he says, This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Then listen to what it says. It says, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Mm-hmm. So Jesus is saying here, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. So in other words, he said there's no higher, no greater, no greater expression of love that could ever be shown by a person they lay down his life for his friends and then you know what jesus went and did laid down his life for us he did it he went and he laid down his life for us showing us that he couldn't love us with any greater love wow and when we realize that love and we receive that love you know, it causes us to deny ourselves and to embrace this amazing love he has for us. Here's how the scripture puts it in Corinthians. It says, for the love of Christ constrains us, right? For we thus judge that if one died for all, then all died. Mm -hmm. That we who live should not live for ourselves anymore, but for him who raises the dead. In other words, when we see what he does, he has done for us, when we see his love for us, we deny ourselves. We embrace the cross. His love constrains us that we would not live for ourselves anymore, but we would live for this wonderful one who has loved us so much and given himself for us. And boy, it causes us to give ourselves for him. I I think of of when we see the majesty and the grandeur of who he is, Mm -hmm. when we think of denying ourselves, it seems like such a small thing in light of who we are embracing when we deny ourselves, which is the Lord Jesus. Jim Elliott, the famous missionary, said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. And when we deny ourselves, we're giving what we cannot keep our right to ourself, and we're gaining the one we cannot lose, our Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful reality this is. That is is a wonderful reality, Gabe. And in conclusion uh, with this episode, I think a good point to end on, Gabe, is that really what we're talking about is, in many ways, our identity as believers. Mm -hmm. Our identity as believers is dead to ourselves, but it's alive to God. We see this over and over in in the scripture and it's specifically I'm, I'm only going to mention one verse here in Romans 6, but I would encourage our listeners go to Romans 6. This is a reality. If you mm-hmm. really want to grab hold of this command, spend time reading, meditating and even memorizing the book of or the chapter of Romans 6 because this is this is our identity as believers, dead to ourselves but alive to God. What does the Bible say about that? 2 Corinthians 4.11 says, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Gabe, I want the life of Jesus living in me. But the only way that's possible is that I have been made dead through the 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 death of Jesus. I've been identified. I've I I was with him in his crucifixion. Um, Galatians two twenty. I am crucified with Christ. This is what uh, Paul says. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians five twenty four says. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. And I, verse 25 is, is beautiful. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And then finally, we have Romans six eleven that says, Likewise, reckon or consider ye also yourselves to be dead. Mm-hmm. There's that considering. We have to, I think this is part of why we, are to die daily, Gabe. It's because this is a daily thing. We have to consider, it says, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, wow, what an invitation, Gabe, this is, is to come to Jesus, to set aside what I want, my life, my identity, and to embrace the identity of, of him. What a beautiful, glorious truth that brings so much freedom. For our listeners, we hope you've been encouraged. Um, In our next episode, uh, we're going to hopefully dig into maybe some practicals of how we can apply this to our everyday life. May the Lord bless you.